All right, y'all, welcome back to the channel. I'm sorry I wasn't able to give you guys as many videos as I wanted to in the past nine days. I've been battling a fever or a cold, or I don't know what it is. It feels like a fever, but it might be a cold. I don't know. Maybe I'm just a bit. But we're back, and we're back with Unpopular NBA Opinions 3. I was supposed to give you guys this, I believe, around January. Never did. Don't know why but I'm gonna give it to you guys now, pause. But without further ado, don't forget to like this video, leave a comment, subscribe, and let's get straight into the content. And you guys see the thumbnail. I think Allen Iverson's a loser. And a little disclaimer before I get to going, a lot of people in the comment section are gonna call me an Allen Iverson hater. Let me just let y'all know this right now. He is one of my favorite players to watch ever. Let me say that again. He is one of my favorite players to watch ever that'll make him a winner see i had to go back and watch alan iverson i'm talking documentaries i'm talking biographies i'm talking all that shit you know what i'm saying the actual basketball games and i can tell you how good of a basketball player he is i'm not going to take that away from him but the thing i am going to take away from him is the label of a winner because that's just not him this basically stems from a tweet that i saw from Wee the plug aka pierre from through the wire and he was basically uh quote tweeting something about someone saying that chris paul wasn't a winner and he said chris paul was a winner and went on a long tangent why and i asked him the question is alan iverson a winner and i saw a lot of people commenting as well they were like yeah of course and pierre actually quote tweeted and he was like the lakers had no win or the lakers had no losses before this and it was game one where ai dropped 48 against the lakers giving them their one and only l in the 2001 playoffs i kind of figured this is how he was going to respond if he did respond because a lot of other people respond that same exact way after that game Allen iverson lost four straight and after that series he failed to get out of the first round. He only made it out of the first round one time, and that was 2003. In 2004, he completely missed the playoffs. In 2005, he lost in the first round, losing in five games. In 2006, he missed the playoffs again. And then in 2007, you guys know what happened. He got traded to Denver. So it's like, how can we call Allen Iverson a winner when all he does is lose like that's what i don't understand see what i do understand is 2001 you know had an amazing run i understand mvp Allen iverson we all get it you know what i'm saying i understand why a lot of people want to call Allen iverson a winner based off that season but before that season he was struggling to get out of the fucking second round you know what I'm saying? Like, it just makes no sense because that one season is an outlier. And how good Allen Iverson is, that one season is going to carry weight into people's minds. That's the only thing we're going to think about when they talk about Allen Iverson. MVP, took the game off the Lakers, stepped over Tyron Lou. And you guys obviously know why Allen Iverson is remembered. I don't really need to, you know, jog your memory. But the one thing that I do need to jog your memory on is the things outside of 2001 he could not win he couldn't do it and let me set the record straight because Allen iverson is not the only player that i enjoy watching that is a loser step up to the plate tracy mcgrady congratulations you're a loser i feel so bad for calling these all-time greats losers but they are they literally are and another person that is his cousin vince carter welcome to the losers club you're a loser you're a damn good basketball player we're all gonna acknowledge it hall of famers for all y'all but y'all some damn losers let's be honest bro another unpopular opinion that i have is that the trey young and luka Doncic trade that happened on the 2018 draft night is still a balanced trade in my eyes i believe that it's still a win-win for both sides because number one both teams have made it to the same exact place which is the conference finals and Trey Young and Luka Doncic haven't even sniffed an MVP award yet. Although I do believe that Luka Doncic is a substantially better basketball player than Trey Young, I just feel like if you attach hindsight to it and these GMs were able to make the decision again, do they make the trade? I still think they make the trade because Luka Doncic is such a hard basketball player to build around and to play with because he is that good. He is that ball dominant. I do think Trey Young is the same exact way, however, not to the extent that Luka Doncic is. I do believe, which is so crazy crazy to say i believe that the atlanta hawks would still want to get trey young over luka Doncic. lots of people are not gonna like that take and i know a lot of people are not gonna like this take either 
um Miami Heat they want to get Damian Lillard they're still beatable you know what I'm saying people want to throw out the super team label they're not no damn super team Damian Lillard is one of the worst defenders in the league and I know how good he is on offense but that's a hole literally right there that's something that teams could plan on teams can attack Damian Lillard I don't know how the hell they're going to be able to hide Damian Lillard the Miami Heat's you know main attraction is their defense although they did just get Jay Rich and I am going to talk about the free agents I'm sorry I didn't get that video out I'm so sorry I was not feeling good at all that day we're, we're getting back into the swing of things but as I was saying they do have Jay Rich that will be able to help him on the perimeter um they do have Jimmy Butler who can help on the perimeter more I don't think that they're going to be able to hide Dame Lillard as well as they think they're going to be able to. You know what I'm saying? And that's going to be an issue. And another reason why I feel like you'll be able to beat Miami is because Dame Lillard don't got that many spacers around him. You know, you can't rely on a Josh Richardson in the playoffs to give you like 37 to 40 percent three point shooting. You're not going to be able to rely on that. You're damn sure not going to be able to rely on Bam or Jimmy Butler to give you that type of spacing. I don't know what other moves they're going to make. I don't know if they're going to try to pick up a Christian Wood. I do not see Damian Lillard and Thomas Bryant being on the court together because that just spells fucking doomsday for the Miami Heat on the defensive side and you also don't want to play Kevin Love too many minutes with Damian Lillard on the court because of the defense as well they're kind of in a hole when it comes to that so basically what I'm trying to say is that there's obvious things that teams can attack when it comes to the Miami Heat on both offense and defense and we could literally just leave it at that I think the Miami Heat are still beatable with Damian Lillard they're not a super team they're not unbeatable it's not a certainty that they're coming out of the Eastern Conference if they acquire that star and speaking of stars um Jalen Brown a lot of people like to say that he's like a top 15 player in the league right now top 20 I don't even think the man's top 25 I am a Boston Celtics fan before anyone wants to crucify me so I know how this man plays and how this man operates and how he approaches the game Jalen Brown what I saw in the Eastern Conference Finals was just not it I saw what you did the series prior amazing work you know what i'm saying the defense wasn't even really paying that much attention to you they're paying more attention to jason tatum which is why he struggled and you flourished but man that eastern conference finals you couldn't even dribble the damn basketball i feel like it's gonna look better now that porzingis is on the squad but dude you play yourself out the top 25. I think there are a lot of players that not many people would say are better than Jalen Brown that are better than Jalen Brown. And I love Jalen Brown's game, man, but the man is so damn inconsistent. He's turnover prone. The man can't go left. All you gotta do, shift your body to the left, motherfucker, go left. Try me if you want to. You're gonna dribble the ball off your foot and I'm gonna go to the other end. You know what I'm saying? It's that simple when it comes to Jalen Brown in the postseason. But hopefully he can play himself back in the top 25. Hopefully he can play himself back in the top 20, maybe even into the top 15 around that range. You know what I'm saying? That's what I would hope for Jalen Brown going into next season because it's make or break for the Boston Celtics, man. Let me tell you. And another thing that I want to talk about, um, I don't really know if this is an uh, unpopular opinion or not, but I feel like highlight culture and Twitter itself has ruined basketball discourse like i mean it's just been destroyed we're getting to a point where people don't even watch the highlights no more they get their takes off twitter and i've seen a lot of people say this and i've been feeling the exact same way people see what they see on twitter and they run with it not to mention all the takes are just bad nobody really watches the game of basketball no more i made a video on it about how highlight culture ruined basketball you know for the actual basketball game but now i get to talk about how it's ruining basketball discourse because people don't watch the games no more they really don't like they don't even watch highlights that's scary that's really scary the only thing they care about is the entertainment portion adam silver's entertainment circus of an nba you know what i'm saying that's all they care about you know what i'm saying if you're entertaining them wherever the people are getting moved are you getting traded are you gonna request a trade come to the lakers you know what i'm saying this is the shit that people want to see i personally like defensive minded basketball games more than offensive minded basketball games see me personally if the score is 97 and 96 i can sit there and watch it if you guys aren't just chucking shots and missing them you know what i'm saying if there's good defense being played very good defensive schemes i'm going to watch it i'm gonna have a field day watching it because i enjoy that type of basketball 
basketball. That's the type of basketball I grew up on. I can sit there and watch the 2008 NBA Finals. I can sit there and watch the 2004 Eastern Conference Finals. That's how much I love defense. Now, I'm not saying that offensive games aren't entertaining because at the end of the day, it's still basketball. So I'm going to watch it regardless. But man, I like to see somebody get into stance, get down and dirty on the defensive end and stop the man from scoring. Because if you can't stop the man from scoring a basketball, then there's a problem. But that's all I got for y'all today. Hopefully you guys enjoyed all these unpopular opinions. Leave some of your unpopular opinions in the comment section below. Blast me, pause in the comment section if you guys disagree with any of my unpopular opinions but that's all i got for y'all today hope you guys enjoyed this video don't forget to like comment subscribe and share with your friends and i'm out peace